Hey y'all, Dixie here. I've been trying to stay busy lately during the quarantine with some backpacking related activities that can be done in the backyard to just keep me from going crazy with cabin fever. And one of the things I've been working on most recently is trail recipes because honestly after doing the triple crown I'm pretty much sick of anything that I've ever cooked while backpacking so I reached out to y'all through some social media posts and asked for you to share your most favorite trail recipes with me that way I could test them out and hopefully have some new ideas to take with me when I return to the trail and I got great response from those posts a lot of good ideas so I grabbed a few of the recipes that sounded good to me and all three of them were absolutely delicious. So I thought that I would share them with y'all here. All of the ingredients for these recipes I either purchased at the store and then dehydrated or it was something that I already had at home. But if you don't have a dehydrator or you're not interested in learning how to dehydrate, then these ingredients can still be purchased online already dehydrated. Also, if you're a vegan, there are some options for substituting meat alternatives, and I'll tell you about that when we get there. Me and my taste test buddy Hank had a really tough time ranking these recipes, but without further delay, here they are. Coming in at number three is Alpine pasta, and for this recipe, you'll need one packet of butter and herb nor pasta sides, sun-dried tomatoes, the original recipe calls for pepper crusted salami, but didn't have that. So I used some venison summer sausage, but you could also buy beef summer sausage at the grocery store. Dehydrated onion and some sort of cheese. I use little baby bell rounds, but you could use a cheese stick or a block of cheese, just whatever you have to take with you. The first step is to boil two cups of water. Once your water is boiling, add in the amount of dehydrated onion that you prefer and then your packet of noodles and stir. You wanna turn down the heat to low and then continue to stir while cooking on low for five minutes. After that five minutes is up, add in your sun-dried tomatoes and your meat and then cook on low for another two minutes again while stirring so you make sure it doesn't burn to the bottom of the pot. Finally, add in your cheese, give it one last good stir, put the lid on the pot and put your pot in your cozy to sit for a few minutes and make sure those noodles get good and rehydrated. Now, if you don't have a pot cozy and you wanna learn how to make one, I have an instructional video on that in the video description of this video. You can find the link there. If you don't care about making a cozy, then just make sure you keep cooking on low until your noodles are good and rehydrated. Basically, the cozy just helps trap in that heat so you can conserve fuel and you don't have to cook until everything's actually done and rehydrated and, and ready to go. For those of y'all who cook on alcohol stoves and are thinking, well, Dixie, I can't turn down the heat on an alcohol stove, so this recipe won't work for me. You can, if you have a cozy, just you know, boil everything for a little while and, and make sure you're stirring frequently and then set it in your cozy and, and wait for a while and it'll probably be all right. But the remaining two recipes, you don't have to worry about turning down heat, so those should work for alcohol stoves, even if this one does not. This Alpine pasta is absolutely delicious. The only thing I think I would change if I was to do this recipe again is if I had some spinach to toss in, I think that would have added to it, but it felt like a very fancy trail meal. It was just something completely different than what I'd had before. But with the recipe that I just gave you and the way that I made it, I'm estimating that it's about 980 calories. Coming in at number two is taco ramen noodles. For this recipe, you'll need a packet of beef ramen noodles, taco seasoning, cheese, dehydrated corn, cilantro, and onion, and then some sort of ground meat. I use ground venison because that's what I had, but you could use ground beef. The trick is to add breadcrumbs to the meat before you dehydrate it. But as I mentioned, you can purchase dehydrated ground beef online. Mountain House has cans of it that you could divvy up into smaller servings and then put it in the freezer until you take it out with you on trail. For those of y'all who are vegan, you can check out Harmony House. They're a great resource for buying meat alternatives. They have a beefish box and chickenish box, things like that, that are just, you know, alternatives of what they sound like. And they're also a good source for purchasing dehydrated vegetables if you don't want to dehydrate your own. The first step to make taco ramen noodles is to pour a cup and a half of water into your pot with your ground meat. I use a quarter of a cup dried ground meat. Then add in your corn. For this recipe, I also used a quarter cup of dried corn and then onions to taste. 
put in a couple of pinches of cilantro, some taco seasoning, and the beef seasoning that comes with the ramen noodles. Now you wanna be careful of how much you use of the taco seasoning and the beef seasoning because you don't want it to be too salty, so you can always add more later to taste. Now let all of that come to a good boil and continue to boil until everything starts to look rehydrated. Then stir up your crushed in pack of ramen noodles. Then add in your cheese, do one final stir, and you can put it in your pot cozy and let it sit for a few minutes. This recipe was really, really good. The only thing I would have changed is I only used one Baby Bell round cheese, but I, in hindsight, should have probably used two. I just think being extra cheesy would have been good, but I'm a cheese lover. Also, I think if I was to take this out on trail, I would make sure that I had some Fritos in my pack too. And if I could get my hands on a little sour cream packet from a restaurant or something like that, then I would take that and add it also. But it was delicious just the way it was, and I would definitely make it again. The estimated calories that I calculated for the Taco Raymond noodles is about 800 calories, and that's if you use two of the Baby Bell cheeses. Finally, coming in at number one is Trail Shepherd's Pie. For this recipe, you're gonna need some dehydrated ground beef, a packet of instant mashed potatoes, dehydrated vegetables of your choice. I used corn, peas and carrots, and onion, a packet of brown gravy. I actually used some mushroom gravy and cheese. To make this recipe, just add two and a half cups of water to your food pot, along with a quarter cup of your ground beef or venison and a quarter cup of dehydrated vegetables. Boil all of it well until you notice that it seems to be rehydrated. Then add in your gravy packet. I use not quite all of mine, but pretty close to it. Boil another 10 seconds or so while stirring. Then add your packet of taters, stir and cut off your heat. And finally, stir in your cheese. Now you can put your pot in the cozy to sit and just make sure everything is truly rehydrated well, but following the recipe just as I stated it, mine was ready to go and I didn't have to let it sit in the cozy. I felt like this recipe was pretty perfect the way that it turned out. The only thing that I would add to it that I would think would help kick it up a notch would be a packet of mayo or a packet of sour cream. And that would just be to help it taste a little bit more creamy. For the Trail Shepherd's Pie, I estimated about 900 and 10 calories. All right, y'all, well, those are the three recipes that I've tried out so far, and like I said, I will likely make all three of them again on trail in the future. They were really good, and they were actually really good to eat at home, too, because sometimes trail food, to me, just isn't that great at the house. Honestly, when I started going through my gear and I got out my food pot and my stove, I was afraid that it was gonna bum me out a little bit because I'm supposed to be out on the Pinhoti right now through hiking, but it was actually exciting and you know those are some items that have brought me great joy before so just finding something to kind of switch my perspective to okay i can use this time to enhance my time out on the trail later that helped me a lot rather than just kind of holing up and being like well i don't even want to think about backpacking right now since i can't be doing it so Hopefully if y'all get out there and test out some new recipes, it'll help you out too. I hope y'all enjoyed the video today. Again, I would love to hear your recipe ideas. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go and we will see y'all next time.